This video was made possible by you. If you want to save time and support what I do, check the link in the description that will take you to my store where you can purchase the source file for what we're creating in this video, as well as other tutorials on my channel. Thank you for your support and let's get back to the video. Welcome back to the mobile app design series. In this video, we're gonna begin designing an interaction that is going to be an attempt at making a simple yes or no decision more interesting, more interactive, and overall just engaging and better. I wanna make it really polished and it's probably gonna span multiple videos. Let's waste no more time and let me present to you the idea that I have. Usually, when you have to decide on something with mobile apps and UIs in general, you generally just get this. You get an, a pop-up, an overlay. One of them is yes, one of them is no, one of, one of these buttons, right? Yes, no, maybe the question is like here or something. You get a very, just a very simple and in my view kind of boring interaction. For like more important yes or no decisions, we could have an overlay that would span the entire screen. It would take up this whole space or just most of it. And I think that in the middle, we could have like a big element that you could drag. You would be able to drag it up and down and at the top section, you would get yes. And at the bottom one, you would get no. And here would be the question. And I'm thinking that when a user is presented with an important decision, they would see this screen and they would be prompted to drag this into the area that corresponds to their decision, right? We could make it animated in a way that when you move closer towards one of these options, they could get bigger and more colorful. Here's what I'm thinking, right? We could have a, I don't know, when you come closer to the yes option, right? And then something similar on the other side. And then I'm thinking that if we decide to go for one of those options, it would then, like a magnet, would but it would snap to the option that you selected. By the way, similar for the no, of course. And then we would get some kind of an animation maybe, and then the whole thing would close, right? And here's how I think we should approach this problem or this design. First, we're gonna have to think about individual states of these animations. So for those of you who have watched the video, my video where we created this add to cart micro interaction, we have prepared a kind of a, an overview of different states of this whole interaction of this whole experience. So we could, we should map out all the states for this experience. And once we are done with that to map the experience, and then once we are done with that, we should build a wireframe, interactive wireframe, right? that would basically allow us to, to identify possible interaction issues and make sure the pacing and the interactivity feels natural. It's possible that it would look something like this. And then finally, once we have that, we should go for the visual design side of things. So we could actually finalize what it looks like and make it look pretty essentially. All right, so let's get into that. Let's get started with the first step on this list. Let's make it a numbers list so we are completely clear on what this means. Let's take a look at the dimensions of the screen. That's gonna be 393, 393 by 852, right? 852, just so that when we actually work on this stuff, we are working with the actual screen size, right? So we don't have to resize this. Okay. And now for the states to map the actual experience, it could, this could be like default and it would be basically this. Let me actually take this and make it larger so that it fits the screen better, right? 
we would get the default we would get the default state where basically this is what the user would see we will probably get something like do you want something something right or are you do you agree with blah 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 it could be anything we don't have to just ask it doesn't have to be yes or no questions it could be even accept or reject right but for now this interaction is definitely going to be just a very binary type of interaction so up or down and then from here the user can go one of two ways right he can go down the yes path or the no path the yes path let's call it yes zero one is going to start with this so let me just remove all of this it's inside move it here and they would be able i think in this case we're going to make it on drag right so they will drag this element this white button essentially and they can drag it towards the yes option or they can drag it towards the no option so let's call this no zero one let's move it over here let's flip this and let's make it actually red all right something like that of course in this case the sorry the yes and no would switch sizes so the no would become bigger the yes would be smaller like this and of course it's going to work the other way around too so if a user releases it not releases but if the user drags it back while still holding their finger on the button they will go back to the initial state similar with this one right so this is going to go both ways and while doing this there is the first thing that i think we should address and that's going to be this so i took this image from this website give me one second so this is where i took this image from right shortcut.io and i think if we take this into consideration so basically what this image is saying is that this area for right-handed user and this area for the left-handed user is the most comfortable when interacting with right so i think this button or this area that we're going to use for moving for deciding should actually be more towards the bottom because we want to make sure this is as comfortable as possible so i think we should definitely make sure the element is starting somewhere in this area just we have to think about the physical interaction with our with our prototype in the real world in this case that's going to be a smartphone so i think we should definitely take that into consideration let me just do this Actually, let me just take all of this and copy that paste it here yes yes and i deleted my rectangle for no reason never mind i'm gonna create a new one like this and like this so i think we should definitely be taking the actual ergonomics into consideration right that's the first thing and now in my view when the user releases their finger so let me we're assuming here that the entire time the user is holding down his finger to drag from here to here to drag this element into this position here we're going to say that finger release is going to lead to the following state and this state i think could look something like this right we could even do a check mark so i think this is what we should be seeing when the user releases their finger and i think that at this point the user doesn't need to see the no option because they have already decided they have released their finger and therefore basically what we just need to show you is like some kind of a confirmation of what what happened similarly to this we're gonna of course need the other option that's gonna be no so when the user goes for no and they release their finger at that point i think that they should simply see this let me 
duplicate it, flip it, select again, and then red. Now this is confusing, right? This is very confusing. You don't see this very often. Anyway, of course they're gonna get you chose no. Now in my view, I think this state should stay there for a while. So stay on screen for a while. And by a while, one second max, right? We don't want to, we don't want this to stay there for a minute, definitely not. But we do want to keep this on screen for the user to understand what just happened, right? So I'm going to make the same note here. Now, of course, we need to give the user an option to not decide, right? We definitely need to have that option. Maybe there are, maybe they are not ready to decide. Maybe they need to think about it, whatever. But there definitely needs to be an option like that. So I'm just going to put a close icon on the top right, probably, and put it on all the... So I'm definitely going to put that on all the screens, right? And now here's the thing. What happens afterwards? We got a confirmation, but clearly this is a pop-up. So this is going to go over the entire screen or at least most of it. That's what we said at the beginning, right? And therefore, we need to somehow define a state before that's going to be called like start. And I think there could be something like, uh, let me borrow a button from our design system. So there could be something like decide, some kind of a button or something. I think it would look cool if we transitioned from this slide to here. Maybe there would be some kind of a question, right? Maybe there would be something like, do you accept these terms? Could be like decide, right? Or confirm or something like. So I think I'm going to keep decide for now. There could be a question. This could lead to, a, to the beginning of the interaction. And then, of course, at the end, you would get two scenarios. You would essentially get a negative one and a positive one. So let me remove these icons actually from the buttons. In this case, we could decide to go for um, yes. And the button would say something like you have, you decided for, you decided yes. And the other one could be a cross or something or it could be visualized differently. I'm just trying to demonstrate the overall logic. You decided no, okay? And then with both of these, there could be an option to decide again, or I've changed my mind, I've changed my mind. And this would happen, this would appear on the screen after a pause or a delay, AKA a delay in prototyping section. And if the user changes their mind, they can click on this and go back to the start and decide again, essentially, right? They can decide again, we duplicate this, flip it, and put it over here as well. All right. So, and I think we are done with mapping the states. This has been a great process for understanding how the overall interaction is going to work, what we need to build, and where we should start. And I think we're going to continue with the interactive wireframe in the next video. I think this is plenty for now. We have defined the start, the end, and everything in between, basically. And overall, I'm very satisfied with how comprehensive this flow is. And I think it's a great starting point for building our interactive wireframe and overall for building our interactive experience. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. This has been very exciting. Make sure to check the link in the description to get the source file for all of this. And I will see you in the next one.